Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Mike Milton for Erskine Theological Seminary, and welcome to Chapel Talks. I want to talk to you today about a ministry of budgets. Someone is saying, did did he say the words ministry and, and budget in the same sentence? Well, I did because it's one of the things that you're going to have to do for the rest of your career, your ministry. Now, if that sounds like a downer, you need to listen to this little video teaching, this chapel talk, if you will, because I want to talk to you about the ways in which budgets are different than church budgets are different than, for instance, corporate budgets. And secondly, how to approach the church budget in your ministry. So church budgeting for pastors, if you will. I think we can begin by admitting that most pastors are not prepared for the ministry of budgets. Most of us didn't have that background in either our education or experience. Some of us did. I happen to have had that. I wasn't that great at it, but I had it. Uh, both in corporate and in government and military. Uh, Later, when I studied for a Master of Public Administration at Chapel Hill, uh, I learned a lot more about budgets. And then as I I learned what they were saying uh, in my uh, situation for my work as a chaplain in the Army, I began to see, okay, this has got a powerful impact. consequence, the truths that I've learned about budgeting had great consequent, consequential effect uh, on my pastoral ministry. And, and I want to share out of that. I do believe the Bible has something to say about this. Uh, we are, for instance, told that uh, a lot about money, like keep yourself free from the love of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. But Jesus also talked about uh, in Matthew, for instance, about a, a good steward. Uh, the Apostle Paul also talked about 1 Corinthians 4, 2, as I'm reading from the screen, as you can see. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. And then Colossians three twenty three is a general rubric for anything that we do in the church. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Uh, Paul told Titus, show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works and in your teaching show integrity, dignity. I believe that showing integrity and dignity in the area of budgeting or the area of uh, visitation has something to say about our our ethos, uh, our the dignity of our person as we deliver the message. We are ambassadors for Christ's sake. Therefore, what we do and how we handle the budget, how we handle uh, the small things, if you will, uh, will reflect on our person as an ambassador in the pulpit on Sunday morning. Okay, it's important. But how is it different? Well, it's different in several ways. A church budget is different than a corporate budget in that a, a church budget really has only one 
income stream, one source of income into the budget. A budget is made of income and expenses. In a corporation, there can be multiple income streams, same way in a government institution uh, or a nonprofit. You can have uh, one or two or three products. Uh, you can have several different customer bases. Uh, you may also have fees that are associated with, uh, uh, with your services, your products and services. Not so in a church. You have one income source, tithes and offerings. If your church is blessed with uh, a large uh, savings account uh, that has been built up over generations, you may have income and that's a blessing. So that's a great income stream is interest income from a, a corpus of money that has been accumulated across the generations at your church. That is a blessing. And that is one way to grow across generations. Uh, another income stream that is, in my estimation, as, um, as legitimate an income stream for the church as tithes and offerings, because it, it really is tithes and offerings that's just been put away in order to generate income for the future. There's a lot more that could be said about that, but let's just limit it to say church budgets are different, number one, because church budgets only have a single source of income into the budget, and that is tithes and offerings. You can't add another income stream. And you say, well, we could add some fees, maybe, but they will always be very small and um, really not important, not relevant to the rest of the budget. The other way that a church budget is, is somewhat different is that it is always seasonal. So, I say it's somewhat different because there's some businesses that are seasonal, obviously. Uh, hotels can be seasonal. Uh, other businesses can be seasonal depending upon vacationers or spring break or Christmas. Uh, most businesses, in fact, are seasonal when it comes to Christmas. Churches, however, uh, have a predictable uh, seasonal um, pattern of giving and even a pattern of expenses. For instance, uh, December is a very important year. The end of the year is a very important uh, month, I should say, out of the year for churches. For most churches, we live off of December. And I mean by that, if our budget is $100,000, it may be very possibly be that 20, 30, 40, or even 50% of that budget is made up of one month giving. Uh, if you are a church in a farming community, those of you in Iowa and Kansas, uh, Western Missouri, or even some places in uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, or California, you know that if, in, if you're in a farming community, uh, the farmer parishioners in your congregation uh, tend to give when the harvest comes in. Now, there are larger farm operations that have their uh, uh, business loans and they can pay uh, regular salaries and they may give like that, but it's been my experience as a pastor in Kansas that uh, uh, farmers are very faithful uh, backbones of the community and the church. Uh, many of them give one time a year and that's at the end of the year. Uh, summer is generally a dip. So here, here's the thing. For instance, if you are reporting your, uh, your income in, in the bulletin, you may, your income to budget may show a, a negative uh, that is, your, your income to expenses in the budget can, can show a negative when, in fact, it, it's, it's predictable and therefore it's okay. And that's why I think we have to be careful to 
uh, put an asterisk uh, by that and not to uh, be browbeating the congregation that they're not giving the way they should. Uh, no, they tend to be giving according to the patterns in their lives of the way they receive income. Um, now, that means if it's seasonal, you have to be very careful about budgeting. Church budgets really can't be, except for salaries, the rest of your expenses you can't just divide by 12. You can't get a number and divide by 12. You've got to look at each and every month. We're going to have a mission trip this month, and we're not going to have a mission trip this month, so we budget for this month and not for that. Don't just divide uh, $500 by 12 and say, uh, this, this is how we'll budget. Be careful to put the expenses to the anticipated month of expenditure. Okay, budgets are different in that they are uh, uh, mono-streamed and they are seasonal. And this is the third thing and, and is difficult for some parishioners to come to terms with. Uh, budgets or expenditures, I should say, in a church budget are different than others in that they are perceived, to quote Marvid Dawn, as a royal waste of time, or in this case, a royal waste of money. You spend an inordinate amount of funds for one hour of the week for Sunday morning. And if you have Sunday evening for Sunday evening, maybe Wednesday evening, all that's to say you're spending a lot of income for a, a very small percentage of the entire week. But the answer to that is that's who we are and what we do, and that's our mission. Uh, we are a worshiping community, and out of the worshiping community, out of that uh uh, that center of who we are, of our identity in Christ as his people, as an assembly, the ecclesia, that, uh, that ecclesial identity then radiates out into the community. For us, it is vital. And so every cent that is spent toward that one hour, two hours uh, with Sunday school, maybe three hours on a Sunday morning that we gather is vital to the, all of our mission. That might not make sense to someone who is counting uh, the dollars for the amount of uh, time spent. So there's a difference there. And when Marva Dawn from Regent College wrote A Royal Waste of Time, she was talking about worship. Uh, and of course she was uh, being uh, sarcastic, it's, it's not a waste of time. It, it's royal in that it's a divine mandate, um, but from the world standpoint, it looks like a waste of time. Maybe that's what she meant. I love the book, by the way, and uh, it's a wonderful book on worship, and I commend it to you. But in a similar way, you're dealing with this in a church budget. There are so many parts of a church budget that if you were to measure that um, variable uh, according to the world standards or according to the standards even of a business, uh, it might look ridiculous. But we are called uh, to fulfill the great commission of Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, how are church budgets um, different? They are different in that they are uh, single stream, they are seasonal, and uh, they may appear inefficient, but they're not, or they don't have to be, I should say. Okay, what do you as a pastor need to know? about making uh, a budget in the church. Now, I'm not going to talk about process. Process differs. Oftentimes, the process begins with the pastor and the pastoral staff, uh, which may include other ordained ministers as well as directors, and by department, so youth, children, 
and so forth uh, that may come to the pastor and come to a team and from there it goes to the diaconate from the diaconate in my experience as a Presbyterian to the session and from the session then it's approved and presented to the congregation. So that's representative government works a little differently in a hierarchical government, church government, and a little uh, different yet again in a congregational government. So I'll not get into too much process beyond those words, but here's what I think that you need to know. A budget for a pastor, you need to know and need to help others to understand that a budget is a narrative. A budget is not merely an assembly of, uh, of metrics. It's not measuring what was. Uh, it's, it, it is a reflection of a vision in your church. How, how is that so? The, the items in the budget for every year reflect where you are in the vision of your church. So a budget should tell a story. In fact, that's true of any budget, whether it's in a corporation or uh, a government agency. A budget tells a story. It's a narrative. And so your budget is a narrative, and you should look at it that way. Uh, you should look at the expenditures that way. By the way, it's, it's, it's that way in a personal budget as well, in a family budget. Uh, we can tell a lot about the spiritual life of a person, for instance, from, uh, from a budget. So too in a church, we can say, here's their vision, here's what's the priority with them, here's the direction they appear to be going. And that budget can also tell you that if it can draw a distinction in some cases between the reality of what you're doing and, and, and the distance from the vision. In other words, is a vision check. You say we exist to do this. We will be this sort of people, this sort of witness for Christ. But you look at the budget and you say, well, that's not really what we're spending. Your philosophy of ministry may say that the number one thing you're about is fellowship. That may not be so in actuality because you look at the budget and the budget says something altogether different. So it's informative, it's instructive. A budget is a narrative. Secondly, as a pastor, I would want you to know that a budget is missional. Now, when I say missional, I mean intentionally focused on the Great Commission and all that we do. That's what I mean when I say it. I know it's got a lot of meanings. A uh, relatively new word in the Christian lexicon. But a budget should be missional in this way. A budget is the narrative that is speaking to your ministry of carrying out the Great Commission of Jesus Christ. Your budget reflects your mission and the mission of God in the world. And that's so in the salary part of the budget as well as in uh, the, uh, the children's ministry and the youth ministry and the, uh, the building and, and so forth. It's telling a story that's narrative, but it's also reflecting the mission of God in the world, or it should be. Now, thirdly, I would have you, if I were your guide and mentor in the matter of pastors and budgets, I would have you to remember that it is a consensus. It's a narrative. It's got to be a mission reflecting the mission of God in the world, but it it has to be a consensus. So it can't merely be your vision in dollars and cents of where the church is going. But in fact, if you since you are in a community uh, as shepherd, uh, you your voice should be reflected in the budget uh, because you are 
if session or deacons or another governance agency of the church makes the policies, you administer the policy and carry those policies out in, in uh, tangible ways that are expressed in the budget. To get there, though, it takes a consensus. So that's why it's good to have a budget that is a visionary budget rather than merely an incremental budget. What is that? An incremental budget is you say, here's how we'll make a budget. Last year we spent uh, $1,000 on travel to General Assembly. Uh, so let's add $1,005 this year or $1,020. Okay, that's not thinking about really what you're doing. Uh, that's just an incremental budget, and you do that for everything. Well, pretty soon you've got the same budget you've had 10 years ago, or 20, or 30, or 40 years ago. It's just been incrementally adjusted according to uh, cost of living index, for instance. We don't make our budgets according to the cost of living index. We make our budgets according to vision. It's reflecting the vision. The vision and mission of the church, or, or uh, our burden, our values, our vision, our mission, our philosophy of ministry stays the same, but strategic uh, expressions of that unchanging commitment change. And so your budget should reflect where we are in fulfilling the vision and mission of our church. And that has to be a consensus. You've got to listen to other voices. Those voices listen to your voice as shepherd. And so you're hearing the voices of shepherds, of uh, ministry professionals who may be in accounting or who may be in uh, um, maintenance or some other area uh, to uh, support the ministry of the church locally. You hear those voices. You also hear the voices of the, the governors, if you will, to use Calvin's term. Those who have been elected by the people, lay officers, if you will, who have been elected by the people to serve as elders and deacons, as stewards, as uh, uh, vestry members. And they represent the voices of the people in a representative government. So, uh, just to recap, three things I would say to pastors about budgets, they're a narrative. Secondly, budgets are missional, or they should be. And thirdly, budget should reflect a consensus of your church, not just one voice, whether it's you or the chairman of the treasury. Okay, we've talked about budgets today. They are different, but the Bible gives us principles on being good stewards and good managers and the degree to which we steward the budget of a church and that responsibility varies. Uh, the degree of that responsibility varies from church to church. But how we do that reflects on us and therefore reflects on how we are received when we stand to proclaim the unsearchable riches of Jesus Christ. Being a shepherd is being the servant leader of a, a community. In this case, a community of conviction, a set apart people called by Almighty God to be his witnesses in the world. The budget is simply telling the story providing a map on going forward as that community. The Lord bless you and keep you. I'll see you next time in Chapel Talks. Mm -hmm.